Spice Island in the Pot is brought to you by Stumpy's Emporium and the Penny Saver Supermarket. Welcome back to Spice Island in the Pot. We just finished up our black eyed peas with pigtail and cassava dumpling. And now we need to have a sweet treat after that. So we're making cassava pone. I have all my ingredients ready, so let's go. So here, in a regular mixing bowl, I have a fine strainer over it. And the reason for this is because the ingredients need to be kind of dry. You want moist pone, you don't want wet pone. So we're gonna start with four cups of minced cassava, which I did in my food processor. Now I know before people used to have this um, grater, this very old fashioned grater, they would make every, they will grate everything in and so it's very fine. So this is also very important. So I have my minced cassava here, which I bought frozen, because you know, nowadays you don't need to get everything first. So I got this frozen, I minced it up, I put some back in to the freezer for future use, another way you can store it. This is one cup of dried coconut minced. There we go. This is one cup of pumpkin puree. Now this pumpkin can't be canned pumpkin if you do find canned pumpkin here. It has to be fresh and minced and when you puree pumpkin, it gets a little liquidy. So this part is important, especially for the pumpkin. So when I get this here, I kind of press everything in. And I also try to get everything down to room temperature. So like with the frozen cassava, you want to make sure that it's totally defrosted. So I kind of just press these things in here to make sure I get as much liquid out as possible. There we go. And then you can leave it and kind of let the juices kind of run down as well. So pone takes a lot of time, but I guarantee you when you get done with it and it comes out perfectly, it's really worth it for sure. So I'm gonna press this down a little more. There we go. So that's that part. So I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna do the wet stuff. Here we go. So wet stuff will be one cup of evaporated milk. And this is also a gluten-free dessert for those of us who, are, who require that type of thing. It's gluten-free, but if you wanted it to also be vegan friendly, you can change this for your choice of soy milk. This is one cup of brown sugar. And to flavor this up, I'm doing some vanilla essence, just about a teaspoon. There we go. A pinch of salt for flavor. About a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half of black pepper. A teaspoon of ground cinnamon. There we go and about a teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg. So this is all the flavoring stuff. This is what brings everything together, makes it really nice. Okay, so very important for porn is the ginger. And I always do this part fresh when I'm actually about to make it because you know, the flavor is better there. So you want to grate this in here. This is going to be about a teaspoon. Now, if some of the things that people look forward to in porn is that burning in the back of the throat that makes you go <coughs> If you like that, definitely put more ginger because that's what causes that. And you could also put a little more of the black pepper because they also like that little spice in between there. So this should be enough. There we go. And for ginger, this I've bought a whole bunch got it on sale and I peel them up I put them in little bags and I keep them in the freezer for future use so that's a really cool way that you can store your ginger so I'm gonna mix this up a little there we go So what this does is that it melts the sugar and brings the milk in together. So now I'm going to add 
some more ingredients here. So this is a teaspoon of baking powder and four tablespoons of vegetable butter. So you, you want to measure this out. I'm used to seeing four tablespoons of butter, so I know what that looks like. All right, there we go. Now, I like to put a few minced raisins in there. I don't want to necessarily say that everybody's going to get a piece of raisin, but when they do get it, it's a really nice surprise. So I like to put this in, and that is very optional as well. So here is my actual vegetable ingredients, my cassava, coconut, and pumpkin. So see, I've pressed this out, I've gotten out most of the liquid from it. There we go, make sure. Right. And I'm going to add this in here. So I'm going to give this a little mix just so you get an idea of the consistency. Because what you want is moisture, you don't want swimming. The pumpkin gives it a really nice color as well. So I'm just kind of folding this. I'm not being too rough with it. Poon is very delicate, even though it's made from a ground vegetable. But it's important for you to be nice with your desserts and have a nice, good spirit and good thought when you make it. So this is just to get it started, but we're really gonna continue to make this into even smaller particles here. So I'm gonna blend this up again because what you want, the consistency that you're looking for is very smooth on the inside with a little crust on the outside. So you wanna be sure to get all these ingredients just as small as you possibly can. So much creamier now if you can see the consistency here see a lot nicer creamier and we still have all the great color in there so I'm just gonna give it a little fold and folding is kind of when you scoop below and bring it over the top so it's not really like a, a mix per se keeps it nice and light so this is our cassava porn mix just like that so we're gonna get ready to bake them up now traditionally People make this in a loaf pan and then you kind of slice it up. So, non-traditionally, more modern, I use these. Because this way everybody gets their own and nobody's measuring their slice against the other person's slice and all that kind of crazy bacchanal in the kitchen. So I'm going to spray this up, each one. Oh, we need to open the spray. All right, spray. And you want to spray a little bit around and you want to get this because you don't want to have your pawn coming out in pieces. So spray this up. Perfect. And spray my pan. So this mix would give you a small loaf pan. This is an eight, eight and a half inch pan. And you'll get 12 cupcakes. You can make all cupcakes. Totally up to you. So gonna just fill it in and porn actually doesn't raise so you don't have to leave any room for raising so just about that amount it's about a half a cup or a little less per cup and you don't want to press it down either you want to just kind of fluff it into the to the tin and then it will even itself out even if it doesn't spread all the way through but you want to be nice and delicate and see there's no liquid it's very smooth and still very moist happening there. I was told that my grandmother had one of the best porn recipes and I wasn't fortunate enough to inherit it. So I kind of had to make this one on my own, but I was told that it's close enough. It's not exactly her own, but it's close enough. And I think I could live with that. That's fine too. So we're almost done here. Let's see. 
And if you have cupcake minis, this works really good at parties. I do that all the time when I do little local weddings and stuff. Smaller cupcake tins, little bite size. It kind of finishes faster that way, but you know, they're very cute. So these are the cupcakes. And then I'm going to pour the rest of my mix into this loaf pan. Just kind of lightly spread it along like this. Okay, so this doesn't require any sitting or raising or anything like that. You're not tapping the pan to spread everything out. You're leaving it just like this. You're preheating your oven 350 degrees. The cupcakes take 25 minutes to bake and the loaf takes 35 minutes to bake. So you kind of have to put two timers on there. So I'm gonna pop this into my preheated oven and then we're gonna have all the good cassava pone goodness. So my pone has baked up 25 minutes for my cupcakes, 35 minutes for my loaf. They're cool. Cool way to check to see if your pone is cooked. You can use a skewer or a skinny knife and just poke the center of it like this. Ooh. And if it comes out clean, then it's cooked. Must be the center, okay? So everything here is all cool. So this is the traditional loaf. And if you look at it, there's a nice crust on top and it's really smooth here. So I'm gonna cut the inside so you can see. Nice smooth knife, see? So all that mincing and blending was totally worth it. And then generally, you have a slice like this. See, nice. You can make a thicker pool if you want it, but more and make it thicker. Some people like it like that, totally up to you. So for my cupcakes, you just kind of slip them out. This is where I'm making sure that you spray the pan with cooking spray is really important so it slips right out. And this, you get a little mountain on top, makes it really cute, gives it some character. And if I cut it, it's the same thing. Really good. This is some really good pone. It's nice, has a little crust on the outside. I did get it in the back of my throat, so there's just enough ginger in there. So, so good. I hope you try this recipe. So today, such a pleasure cooking with you. We did our cassava dumplings, and we sealed that up with some black-eyed peas and pigtail, and we have our traditional cassava pone for dessert. It was such a pleasure cooking and baking with you today. I hope you are inspired to try some of the recipes, to which the information is at the bottom of the screen. And if you do try them, please tag and follow us on Instagram at SpiceTC5, on Facebook, Spice Island in the Pot, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember, food is essential to life, so do make it good. Until next time, this has been Spice Island in the Pot.